Heads and hello everybody, welcome to the Geek Heads podcast where we talk about everything film industry related and today we are gonna fan cast MCU. So basically we have 43 characters which are not yet in the MCU but are either rumored or already confirmed that are gonna be in the MCU or that we hope that or at least I hope that are going to be in the MCU at some point and uh, we have some major X-Men characters that we are gonna go through we are gonna go through Fantastic Four and a couple of their villains uh, we are gonna go through Spider-Man characters which are mostly villains because well Spider-Man has a huge list of villains and uh, then we have other superheroes and other villains from the comics that have not yet been introduced in the mcu do you have any notes on the start before we we go okay yeah yeah hello everybody also firstly i would like to know if i'm really silent it's because of these are your fan casts so yeah if i have something to comment also i haven't seen any x-men movies at all and i have seen one of the fantastic fours like once so yeah, I'm probably going to be more active on the end half of the podcast when the subject is more familiar with the Spider-Man and other Marvel characters. So yeah. And also also why we do this way that I only fan cast this is because this episode will be way too long otherwise. Yeah, three hours long, no. Um so so it's gonna be just me and my, my fan cast and then you're gonna kind of react to yep who I'm suggesting to act in these roles. So, without any longer mumbling, let's go to the yeah. to the list. And uh, I'm going to start with the X-Men. And I'm going to yeah. start with the original members. X-Men. And um, I'm going to start with Professor X, a.k.a. Charles Xavier. And I'm going to go with Brian Cranston from Breaking Bad. He's just this... Um, I just would love to see him as Xavier. There's a lot of rumors and he's kind of this guy that a lot of other MCU fans also want to want want him in the MCU and especially as Professor X. He's kind of this older guy. I'm especially for X-Men. I'm kind of looking for a little bit older cast. So I think Brian will do a perfect job. Uh, second character is Cyclops and I'm going to go with Scott Eastwood. Firstly, I was thinking Scott to act Wolverine, but I think he will be too young if Brian will be Xavier. I think Scott will be way too young Wolverine, so I think he will be perfect to that dude guy, kind of like the leader type of dude. Third one, I gotta say this character is something that I'm not that familiar with. Mostly I just know him from the Fox's MCU movies. So the third guy is Iceman, and I'm gonna go with... Josh Hutterson. I don't really have any big reason. I don't know much about this character. He kind of just looks the part. So that's why I'm going to go with him. Angel. Another character that I don't know much about. But I don't know. Maybe Army Hammer. I know that Angel is supposed to look like this super good guy. And Army just has always been the good guy in every single movie that I've seen him in. More or, or less. And, um, and um, I think he will be perfect for that role. And um, Beast. This is kind of... Half joke, half real, because I couldn't figure out any better option, so I'm gonna go with Jack Black. Um, I think he will bring a lot of comedy to to the X-Men, and I know MCU wants that to every group, at least some guy who can be the comedy act, kind of. So I think Jack Black will be perfect. Why so many of these characters blue? Yeah, I don't know, They're, they, <laughs> they have something going on with the blue. Anyways, I'm gonna go with Jack Black, I think. I would love to see him in, in MCU and I think this is the best role for him from all of these guys. Um, the last one from the original members is Jean Grey aka Phoenix. And uh, I'm not sure about this choice but she's the only one that comes to mind so I'm gonna go with Emma Stone. Well she has red hair and uh, the age matches up pretty well and um, that's pretty much all my reasoning. I don't know. I think Emma Stone will be interested to be part of the MCU. And uh, I think she's that type of star that MCU or Marvel will want to want to bring in the MCU. Yeah. Um, then let's go to other... Do, or do you have any anything about no, that? No, just, I just want to mention, like, uh, of course, if uh, Disney brings X-Men to MCU, there, of course, there can be some actors that don't get recasted. 
or some roles that don't get recasted, so they go with the original or actors that they have on Fox side. On yeah, you never know. I, that might be that might be, but I I want to bring new characters to all of these. Yeah, and I don't know. My gut feeling just tells me that if they're going to recast some of these, they're going to recast all of these because otherwise it can be a little confusing for people that are these other movies then part of MCU or are they not? Yeah, because I remember a trailer for the latest X-Men movie where it's the, it's the Dark Phoenix or something yep. where where the Jean Grey character goes like something. So I just sim- remember the actress uh, Sophie Turner who's playing Jean Grey in that movie. Like, it's just uh, kind of it looks like feeding. Okay. So yeah, well, if, if it doesn't recast it, well, then... Well, that's the only movie that... Uh, pretty much one of the only movies that I haven't seen from the Fox X-Men. Well, it's on Disney Plus, Rude Watch, probably. <laughs> See, might be part of But for me, again, the way I will bring X-Men will be older characters, and I don't think she will fit into that. I yeah. think she will be too young. For my fan cast... Um, if I would be to recast these characters. Yeah, <laughs> your actors are pretty old. The reasons why I go with more older is because, well, Spider-Man characters are super young. Yeah. So I think that will kind of balance things okay. out. Because Fantastic Four probably, or this o- a lot of these other characters are like in their 20s, like in between there. So I think a little bit older X-Men, they have been hiding and the mutants are not very popular at the moment. I think that will be the storyline to go with in MCU. That would be kind of the reasoning why why they haven't mentioned uh, mutants in the yeah. earlier movies. It's because they are like kind of underground or kind of in the shadows, in a way. Yeah. So, yeah, let's go to the next character, which is probably everyone's favorite X-Men character, which is the Claw Man, Wolverine. And um, I'm actually going to go... And I know probably a lot of you... They are like, what the hell, man? But hear me out, okay? So I'm going to go with Russell Crowe. And um, I know he can be comedic, but also really serious. And that's what I want from him. I know he's quite tall. But um, <laughs> would you rather have Danny DeVito? You know, at least he would be the right height. I know Wolverine in the comics is super, super short. But then again, Hugh Jackman was Wolverine and everybody loved him. And he's way, way, way too tall to be... Like, kind of correct height for Wolverine. Yeah, that's the thing. If you have a character already on many movies by some actor who's, like, 1'8", like, tall. Yeah. And then you bring an actor who's, like, uh, really short to play it. Many people would, could be like, huh, what what is going on here? Get confused. Literally, I, d- I just don't know anyone who will look like Wolverine and who I know could act like Wolverine and is the right height. Is like, this super short guy. I just don't know anyone who could do that. They will just take Tom Cruise and put put him a beard. <laughs> yeah, or or I actually would have big Daniel Radcliffe, who will be a little bit shorter guy, if he would have gone with the younger X-Men. But again, I don't want young X-Men. I don't think that will fit as well. And so that's why I, I rather went with Russell Crowe, another Australian, or, well, he's from New Zealand, but he lived in Australia, I think. So another... Uh, another yep. guy from okay. there to act for Wolverine. Um, but yeah, let's go to the next one. Let's not ramble on with the same character for too long. So let's go to talk about Storm. Yeah. Okay. And um, again, this is another character which I don't have any particular extras that I think will nail the role. I just went with something that I think will look the part. So I went with Yaya Da Costa. Um, I will actually have gone with. So is Aldana, and I think she would have been great as Storm, but obviously we already have her in the MCU. So I'm going to go outside the box and choose Yaya de Costa. I haven't seen a lot from her, uh, and she's maybe a little too young, but um, yeah. again, I can't come up with anything better. And uh, if someone they don't, don't know Yaya de Costa at all, uh, she's known from The Butler, she had a small role in that, and then from a couple of TV series like Chica Comet, for example. I haven't seen a lot from her work, but um, just just a little bits there and there, and um, I think she's the best choice that I can come up with. 
The next character is Nightcrawler and I'm gonna steal a character from the DCEU. I don't know if this is even possible, if he could actually go to MCU. Stealing an actor. Yeah, I don't know. He's already in the DCU at the moment, acting flash, but I'm gonna go with Ezra Miller. Okay, yeah. You have anything? No, I, I'm just, yeah, you said if they could steal an actor from a other major studio. Uh, I was just thinking of Dune at the moment, like how is... Well, it's not connected. It's not the same thing. It's like it's more controversial, I would say, to bring a superhero actor to play another superhero character. What I understand, I think he's still acting in the DCO. I don't know if he's even going to have his own movie or something, but as long as I know he's still part of the DCEU, so... I don't know if that's even possible to... The show probably has contract with so Yeah, so, that's yeah, why I don't know okay. if that's even possible. But if it is, I think he will be perfect. He's this funny young guy. And um, I know he can act a little bit like this weirdo guy who nice crawler kind of is. Like this shy introvert that is not very social and um, people kind of get creeps from him. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I think Ezra could do that. Maybe. I haven't really seen him in that type of roles, but um, I just get this vibe from him. The last hero from from these X-Men characters is Emma Frost, and I'm going to go with Emilia Clarke. Okay. Only reason why Emma Frost is in this list of mine is because Emilia Clarke has said she would love to act in MCU, and I think this would be the perfect role for her, and I don't really know any other role that I think will fit her as well. So if they're going to bring... Emilia Clark, I think she should be Emma Frost, maybe. Otherwise, Emma Frost, I don't really care if the character will be part of MCU or not. I don't know much about her. Uh, but yeah, let's go to the villains of X-Men. And the first one is, of course, Magneto. Uh, let's stick with that. Um, and I'm going with the popular choice, Christoph Waltz. There's a lot of fan arts and um, theories and rumors going on. And a lot of fans, MCU fans, wants him to act Magneto. Now again, I don't know if he looks old enough compared to Brian being Professor X. But I think they can make, at least make him look old enough. He's not so far off. Obviously we'll know that how fantastic actor he is. And uh, he can act this super... He can act this guy who looks nice at first, but then at the same time, he's this super menacing guy. And just like, for example, um, Inglorious Bastards is something that comes to my mind. Or Django. Only thing that comes to my mind, he's the villain on James Bond movies. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah. He's the main bad guy. Yeah, James Bond, then, um, then Inglorious Bastards. Then to me also, well, he's not bad guy, but in Django, he's this kind of guy that you kind of figure out. And uh, that's something that I want Magneto to be. So I'm going to go with Christoph Waltz. That's kind of like a safe bet. Um, the next one is Mystique. And I'm going to go with Natalie Dormer. Kind of looks like she could be Ezra Miller's mother. Like Mystique is Nightcrawler's mother in the comics. And so that's pretty much my reasoning. I think Mystique is this kind of character. First of all, I don't want her to be in as big of a role as he was in Fox's X-Men movies. I want him to be more like this second-hand villain, not this major character. So she doesn't need to have so much lines or so much screen time. So I didn't think so much about the acting itself. More like just she looks the part, so I'm gonna go with Natalie for that reason. Third villain of X Men is Juggernaut. Juggernaut. I'm, I'm just listening to you butcher this name. Yeah, <laughs> this whole episode is gonna be about me butchering this name. And by the way, this next name is <laughs> one of those. I have no idea how to pronounce this name. I know this guy's Icelandic and he acted in Game of Thrones, but I'm gonna go with Hafpor. Julius Björnsson. It's half Thor. Okay, I have no idea how to pronounce Icelandic names. Yeah, that's why his nickname is also Thor, because it uh, sounds... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's the world's strongest man of 2018, so... He's... Yeah, I am from Nordic country, and I still cannot pronounce <laughs> our neighbor country's names. Well, not It's not the same language. But... We are not... Yeah, not would, even close. Would so... be easier if we were Swedish or something. Yeah, but I'm going to go with him... He's this big guy, he can act Sakuna. Sakuna doesn't have to have much 
of a role. Um, so our other choice would be Kevin Durant. If MCU wants to make Juggernaut like a comedic character, like he was in Deadpool 2, then I'm gonna go with Kevin Durant. Otherwise, I'm gonna go with my first pick, Half Door. That was the way you pronounced the name? I believe so. It's written with the upside upside down B and shit, so... I learned quickly. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, let's go to the next character, um, which is Apocalypse. And I don't know, Apocalypse could be pretty much anyone for the looks, because he will probably be made in CGI for the most part. But I'm gonna choose Mark Strong, because he has a big screen presence in a way that even if we won't see him, his voice is just something that just, you know, it just makes you listen and makes you scared, the voice only. I have to, I have to listen to that from somewhere. Is he acting on some something special? Or? I don't remember right now him from anything special, but I know he's been acting a lot of villainous characters a lot of these kind of scary guys oh yeah 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 okay yeah i go i google now i know who we are talking yeah, about yeah i think he will be great i think uh he will be great at acting a villain that seems unbeatable first just like just prowling was as thanos i think that would be perfect perfect role for him i think apocalypse should be this super menacing th- guy that we need all the x-men to stop him kind of so yeah that's my choice. Okay. That was all the X-Men characters. Um, so now let's go to... Let's go to... <coughs> sorry. Let's go to Fantastic Four. I have something in my throat okay. now. <laughs> uh, so let's start with Fantastic Four members. So the first one is Reed Richards, a.k.a. Mr. Fantastic. And obviously I'm going to go with John Krasinski. And for an Invisible Woman, a.k.a. Susan Storm, I'm going to go with Emily Blunt. That's what everybody wants. That's what I want. That's what most likely we are going to get if the rumors are even remotely close. They both have almost got roles in MCU. Like John was almost Captain America at first and Emily was almost Black Widow at first. Okay. And um, there was different reasons why they they had to turn down or didn't get the roles. Emily had to turn down the role and uh, John didn't get at the end. Chris Evans obviously did. Um, but they both want to be part of MCU. I know that. And um, I think they are this Hollywood couple that everybody likes at the moment. And uh, Disney, of of course, likes that. That's why I think they will be perfect for this. They are the same age group. And obviously, Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman is a huge couple in in the comics as well. So I'm going to go with them. Then I'm going to go as Human Torch, aka Tony Storm, who is Susan Storm's little brother. I'm gonna go with Daker Montgomery. And again, just the age fits well. Human Torch has always been kind of like a friend of Spider-Man in the comics. And I hope they will do that in the MCU as well. So I want them to be even a little bit like the same age group or look like they could be kind of friends. And um, so I'm gonna go with him. I think he can act like this. Not douchebag, but this kind of self-centered guy. And... um, yeah, he looks a bit baby face. Yeah, he has this kind of baby face and I think he could act perfectly like this so off guy. Highly extrovert. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for and I think he could nail that. So I'm going to go with him. And then the last one is Ben Cream, aka Ting. And I'm going to go with Bruce Willis, which is also, again, like this outside the box. He's a little bit old already, I know that, but I think... He will fit the way that MCU works, I think. And I would love to see him being all annoyed for Daker as Johnny Storm. Bruce being an like asshole. 70 or something. And um, like he's in the comics, like, always like Johnny is getting on Ben Grimm's nerves. And um, the thing, again, probably will be CGI anyway, so the size is not a problem. And yeah, maybe be too old, but... Little bit makeup and little bit CGI. And yeah, a little bit de aging. And well, Disney has money and technique to do that. So yeah. Yeah, I can agree on that. Yeah. I, I know that's one of these choices that probably some people are going to disagree strongly. But, um, you know, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to go with him. Let's go through a couple of um, Fantastic Four villains, the most notable villains. And let's start with Galactus. Which probably, I think, if he will ever be part of the MCU, he's not only going to be Fantastic Force villain, he's probably going to be the the top villain at some point in the MCU. Yeah, 
and the whole adventure is gonna be against him because he's even bigger guy than Thanos. And again, 99.999% CGI. So the voice is actually the only thing that I care about at this moment. So just because of the voice, I'm gonna go with James Earl Jones. And if they wanna have somebody as as like the partiment of Galactus, then I don't know. I don't even know if you need anyone. My second choice would be Liam Neeson, but I mean only if he will say I will find you and I will kill you. Okay. Only then. <laughs> Otherwise, no Liam Neeson. Okay. And for Doctor Doom, I'm gonna go with Luke Evans. I don't actually just thinking about it. I don't know if he has already been in MCU. I kind of just had this feeling that he might have been, but if he has been, he has been some super small character that doesn't really matter. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, at least I didn't see anything come up with when I Google searched. Is he the guy who looks a bit or like Orlando Bloom or something? Yeah, he's like the evil Orlando Bloom. Yeah, totally. He could be evil to him. Yeah. <laughs> I know some people who are listening might be like, he should be Namor. And he has been rumored for okay. the role I know, but I have someone else as Namor. Or then don't. I don't even remember if I don't have it. Name or anyone. I probably don't. I actually probably you forgot don't. name. Okay. Well, then I have no excuses. It's, it's just... <laughs> it's just not... Well, I don't know much about Namor, but I just think Luke Evans will be great for Doctor Doom. I don't know if <laughs> Namor is good actor. Yeah. <laughs> Take 270. Namor can act Namor. He said in an interview recently that after football career, he wants to be an actor, Hollywood actor anyway. And I mean, he acted in, in La Casa de Papel, so... No, but that was that was like an added role after the <laughs> premiere and stuff, so... Yeah, I know, but... Well, he could he could do, do one of these, like, uh, Elon Musk kind of roles on Iron Man 2. He just, like, is himself on the, like, background. <laughs> yeah. Like, on some party I'm or really something. Honest, it would be hilarious to have Neymar as Neymar. But then I just have super bad sense of humor. <laughs> anyway, talking about Luke Evans' twin, for Silver Surfer, I picked Orlando Bloom. Okay, yeah. And uh, hear me out, yeah. Uh, I picked Orlando because I think he will be perfect fit to act a character who is sympathetic guy, who tries to do the right thing, but is in a very bad situation, like Silver Surfer pretty much is. He acts kind of this type of guy in Pirates of the Caribbean as well. And... He also acted like the super good guy in Lord of the Rings too, so... Yeah. He's made for that type of role, and uh, he's that type of guy who you just can't hate. Yeah. At least I cannot. Every time I see his face, I just smile. Like He's, he's, a, he's a bit baby face, let's say. Yeah, he's just that. like baby face. He's just a good guy. Like, every way. He just looks good guy. Like, I don't know, if he will murder somebody, and then he will, like, have some apologizing video in Twitter, everyone will be, you know, that's okay, it's all right, it's all right, we understand. <laughs> okay. So, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna go with him. Let's go, should we go Spider-Man characters first or other, these couple of other Marvel heroes first? Um, we could go Spider-Man maybe first, but I have also, I have to add a note talking about Marvel characters. Now you say it. I think Orlando Bloom, you told him joining MCU. I think he has openly said that he is open to play uh, Captain Britain on MCU. Yeah, I actually have heard that. I just don't know anything about Captain Britain. don't care about the characters, to be honest. So that's why I don't have him on the list. Yeah, it's... Yeah, w yeah. I think it's like having a Captain Marvel, America, and then a Britain. It's just yeah. I don't know. I don't. I really don't know. Yeah, no, not good idea. <laughs> so casting him as something else would be. I really don't know anything about the character. He's not super known character. Silver Surfer is much more known guy. Yeah, totally. Obviously, that is not something that stops MCU. Like we know, Eternals are coming. We have Guardians of the Galaxy in the MCU. They have never been super big characters in the comics yeah so they can still do that but well now they are highly highly known but before not really yeah now they are but previously no chance yeah um so spider-man are we talking about spider-man yeah. okay let's go spider-man next obviously we don't have spider-man himself if somebody was wondering we um, have already spider-man yeah we still trust tom holland but let's have good guys um slash well not villains <laughs> because most of these guys gonna be either anti-heroes or villains because he has a lot of nemesis um 
But let's start with the good guys and let's start with and I know some of these characters something that a lot of you other MCU fans fellow MCU fans don't think will ever be part of MCU but I'm a Spider-Man fan and I hope to see every single Spider-Man character from the comics at some point in the MCU but that's just me so I'm gonna have them on my list mostly because of that but yeah let's go to the first one which is Gwen Stacy and I'm gonna choose Anna Sophia Rob. I mean, she just 100% looks the part, at least in my opinion. And I know she can act this kind of innocent schoolgirl, like she has done in many movies. Although, well, she's much older than she was in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, for example. But <laughs> she has, she's like a kid actor, or she was a kid actor. She started yeah, yeah, like totally. super young. Started. So yeah, she's born in 1993, and she started acting really, really young. So. Yeah, and she's kind of the age fits well, and I know I, I don't know she just she fits for that type of role. I found like this picture where he had like this headband or whatever. She kind of looked like how I've always seen Gwen Stacy as in the comics. So I saw that one picture and I was immediately like she has to be Gwen Stacy if someone doesn't. Gwen Stacy have a headband also on the. She had headband in the Amazing Spider-Man at least, also in the cartoons or the um, Spectacular Spider-Man. That, by the way, in my opinion, is the best Spider-Man cartoon, one of the best cartoons ever. Period. Um, so she had headband there as well. She's it's kind of part of the character. So she just looks like she could fit the role. Yeah, she just looks like she could fit or, the role. Or she looks like she could be the character. Yeah, it's kind of like this Robert Downey Jr., Tony Stark, or Cumberbatch, Doctor Strange. Like, Cumberbatch looks exactly like Doctor Strange in the comics type of thing. I think this is the same case. Like, with Anna Sophia, she looks like Gwen Stacy in the comics, so why yeah. not? Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's go to Harry Osborn, and I go with Harrison Osterfield. And mostly because he looks the part too, and he actually is Tom Holland's best friend in real life, and he is also actor. So I mean, what else do you need? They, they have the chemistry and all that, and uh, he looks like this good guy, but also can be bad guy too, which obviously Harry Osborn is in the comics. So that was like done yeah. deal. I didn't even think about anyone else. They don't have any reason to have anyone else. He looks. A highly British, I will still say so. Well, that's true. That's true, but... um. Yeah. Well, Tom Holland looks also really British, but I think Harrison Osterfield looks more more British than Tom Holland. That's true, but 90% of the characters are, like, British. Just make cover makeup, like... Yeah, I will say, I will say 80% people wouldn't even notice if the accent was right. <laughs> yeah. And maybe color the hair different or something. Yeah, like dark black hair. And yeah, yeah, that's all my reasoning for there, basically. But I think yeah. I don't okay. need any more evidence to why I think he, he should be Harry. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's go to Mary Chain. And at the same time, I want to talk about the rumors. Because I know some of you are like, why Mary Chain? Why MJ is in this list? We already have Missile Jones, MCU's own MJ. Probably you are also thinking that. But there's rumors that they want to have Mary Jane too, and that's the reason why they didn't name Zendaya's character Mary Jane. The way I see it is that they put Missile Jones for Zendaya's character's name because they want to have MJ, but at the same time they wanted to do her differently without red hair, uh, with different backgrounds and different ethnic so I think they choose different name because if it's not gonna work and if Spider-Man fans is not gonna like that they can always bring the real or the Mary Jane herself in the MCU as well and that doesn't really have any plot holes because obviously they can be more the one who whose nickname is MJ that's not anything special really so I know some some, some people won't like that but I've always liked MJ like Mary Jane so I have no problem with it. What are your thoughts about those rumors? Yeah, it's like, it's cool that uh, Marvel didn't bring Mary Jane, like a redhead character, you know, like, it, it's just so common in Spider-Man to have somebody like redhead or blonde. Yes, I can see that way, but also I think when you have these characters that have their own, like, things that makes them them and have these things that makes people recognize them, I think those things are what they soon 
ever take off from those characters because then they are not the same characters anymore. And for Mistle Jones, they kind of changed the background, not just here. In many ways, they changed the background too. Yeah, totally. Like the fact that Mary Jane was neighbor first, not even classmate at first. And uh, yeah, the whole characteristics are different, basically. She's a whole different person. So I, I don't think they should do that. Obviously, they didn't because her name is not Mary Jane. She is not Mary Jane again. She is Michelle Jones, so she is a different character. But I think that's the reason they did that. Because if Spider-Man fans still want the Mary Jane there, they can still do that without any plot holes. So that's why they had different name for Zendaya's character. Yeah. But anyways, your cast. Let's go to the casting itself. For Mary Jane, I'm gonna be Catherine McNamara. McNamara, yeah. Uh, at least she would be my first choice. She's the only one I know that actually looks the part, but I don't know that much about her acting. So I also have two others as a second choice. Uh, we saw Stephanie Scott and Anya Taylor Joy. But honestly, I haven't found anyone that I 100% know will fit the part in every way. I haven't found any of that, but obviously MC is gonna have all, all these auditions. That's the word I'm looking for. Auditions. Also, Disney might go wide on these auditions for, like, Mary Jane if they don't find an actor. Yeah. Like, already some kind of well-known actor who fits. They might actually go, like, open castings with that. Yeah, probably, like, going through 500 characters or something. Fi- 500 actors, I mean. And maybe when they bring Mary, if they bring Mary Jane some point, they might just go like as a background character first. So doesn't need really acting. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they will do that way. So they open, maybe the open casting pick might, might not have to be a good actor at first. Yeah, that's true. Also, I, I think they will do in a way that they will introduce her, not most likely in the next Spider-Man, but maybe Maybe the fourth one, and then the kind of fade Michelle Jones off some way. I don't know how. Some some people have actually had rumors or like ideas that she will become some other superhero uh, because her attitude and all that will fit for for a superhero character. And I think Firestar was one of those characters that some people thought she could become. Yeah, possibly. So that way they could still have her in the MCU as well and still bring Mary Jane. But anyways, I think they are going to at some point put Michelle Jones out of the Spider-Man picture and then then later on bring Mary Jane. Probably going to even have Gwen Stacy in the middle. So there's a lot of time before we're probably going to see Mary Jane in any big role, if ever. But yeah, I, I think those three are my choices. And once again, Katrine is my first choice for Mary Jane, at least for now, because she do 100% look the part, but I, I don't know anything about her acting. I just know she is actor. But yeah, let's go with Miles Morales. And I have Miles Morales here because I just want to talk about the rumors because there's been a lot of rumors. Uh, and I, I don't know the uh, whose name it was, but there was some actor, young actor who said that he wants to be Miles Morales in the MCU. But my problem is that, honestly, when Tom Holland's Spidey is old enough for us to have Miles Morales in the MCU, uh, which is what, like five to seven years, because Miles Morales is much younger, at least in the comics, than Spider-Man. And Spider-Man is already in, in mid twenties uh, when he dies and Miles Morales becomes the new Spider-Man. So if they're gonna do with the original way, with how they did in comics and MCU has followed the comics very much so earlier as well, like with all these other storylines too. So I don't know why they will do any different here. So any current actor that could fit the part right now will not be young enough then. So if they will somehow have Miles appear now to have some cameo, then I don't know. I don't even care. Just have some random six, seven years old kid there. Like who cares? It just makes no sense right now yeah i have random thoughts about this uh, after i listened to you talk about the five seven year time gap i just had a thought about spider-man 2 and how they brought up mysterio like he was already like character existing but actually didn't sh- show on film but yeah. he's like on uh, supposed to be on the background of some scenes and stuff and i had the five year gap age gap 
Yeah. I had a thought about if Miles Morales was already before Endgame, like this Mysterio type of character off screen, but still like supposed to be on the screen. And then didn't yeah. get vanished and aged up the five years during Endgame. And then they could have a Tom Holland aged or like older Miles Morales already. Well, that's true. They could do that. Like, of course, why not? I had this thought. That would, yeah, and upcoming Spider-Man 3. I didn't even think about that, but that would make perfect sense too. But still, it would be for years to come because still the age yeah, difference would probably. be like at least over five years. Because the age difference yeah. was almost ten years, like nine or something years. I don't. I'm not. I don't remember for sure. Yeah, how much is Tom Tom Holland Spider-Man supposed to be old? Now, yeah, I think sixteen or seventeen. And he's in high school still. So, if Miles Morales was supposed to be like Miles Morales, will probably be like six, seven years old right now. I guess. Okay, so he will be like twelve, twelve, eleven, twelve or something. Yeah. So there's still like at least four years. Okay, so at least four year time gap. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I don't have anyone yet. I don't know. I don't know any actor who will be sixteen. In four years. Or be looking 16. Yeah, I don't have anyone for Miles. But I just put Miles in this list because I just wanted to talk about talk about that. Because there was a lot of rumors for Miles and I think it's not time yet. Yep, yeah. okay. Not even close. But yeah, let's go to the next one. Cindy Moon slash Silk. Okay, yeah. And I actually first I didn't even want to put her in this list because the character is just that type of character that I would have never thought they would bring to MCU. But then I realized that we already had or had Tiffany Spencer in in the Homecoming, acting Peter's schoolmate, uh, whose name was Cindy. Some familiar Spidey fans, and uh, funnily enough, she was one of the classmates that did not blip from Thanos' snap, and she didn't appear in Far From Home, which will fit perfectly to Cindy Moon's comic story. By the way, do you know anything about the comic story there? Yeah, not really. Okay, I'm gonna just super fast explain what I know. So, she was also bit by the same spider than Peter, so she was in the same class, and then there was whole, this whole mess up stuff, whatever it was, and they kind of put her away her parents put her away in some random place that nobody knew about and she was kind of prisoner there in some way so she kind of like she was classmate of peter and then she just disappeared and then years later they found each other again when peter actually saved her from there after peter killed the guy who was supposed to kill cindy okay so i think they're already building that in homecoming she was part of his class and then now in far from home she's not anymore she probably did not blip and um she probably is now in the cell or wherever the heck so, she so is. she basically looks like the character <coughs> on in into the spider verse is the, is it the same character or what or is it just same looking character no she's uh if you Google Cindy Moon, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, she's Asian character, Asian girl. Asian girl, yeah. What I Googled the comics version, and she has the same type of clothing. Yeah, but you mess it up with another character. It's uh, in Into the Spider-Verse oh, movie, yeah. they had Spider-Gwen, which was from the different universe. So she basically is from the universe where Gwen Stacy got bit by Spider and not Peter. Yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, totally, yeah. Yeah. So Cindy Moon is different. I can see um, now what you're talking about, and yeah, yeah, the the Silk and aka Cindy Moon character. Why I didn't think she will be part of the MCU was because I don't know how they will do that. Because basically, the thing is that they both have bit by the same spider. They have the same power, so they have this some random romantic magnetic field with each other, and they just not to put too harshly or. I don't want to have this video taken down, basically. So I'm just going to say they they had liking on each other, basically, okay. uh, very much so. And they couldn't really fight against the crime because of that. So that was the whole story. I don't know how they were going to do that in the MCU in child-friendly way. So that's why I didn't. I never thought like she could be part of the MCU. But I guess she might still be. Yeah, if she's kind of teased already in, so... Yeah, that kind of changed my mind. Yeah, why not? 
Maybe they can figure something out and do it a little differently. Or then just take that thing out of it already. And of course they could do a storyline where she's the bad guy or something and then kills MJ what we have now and then they can bring in the other Mary Jane or the actual Mary Jane. Yeah. Or basically just take the lover thing out of Cindy and, and Peter and just have them to be both yeah. spider heroes and be friends. And also, I yep. don't know how they can fit all Peter's one million romantic stories in the MCU in few movies. Yeah, they totally can't. That's, yeah, that's they the already thing. had the first one. They already had... Um, wait, I forgot the name. Oh, man. They already had Liz Allen. Well, we don't know if she's Allen, but I think she is. Now we have Missile, which is totally new one. Then we still have maybe at some point Gwen, or maybe even Mary Jane, or maybe even Cindy. Probably maybe at some point even Black Cat. So there's just a lot of characters to Peter to have relationships. So we have still so many to go. Oh, I just realized. I don't know how they're going to pull that off if they're going to have all of those characters. So I don't know. But yeah, let's go to the anti-heroes. Let's not talk about Cindy too long. And let's talk about a little bit similar, which is Black Cat, aka Felissa Hardy. To simply put it, for younger Felissa, I'm going to go with Camila Mendes or Sabrina. Carpenter, and I think both of them will at least look the part. Then the older Black Cat, which I actually prefer, would be Alexander Daddario. And yeah, I will 100% prefer older Black Cat, which I think fits the character and will bring something different to the MCU. Uh, I think Alexander don't only look the part, but could probably also act the part. And uh, I would want to see Black Cat similar to the Ultimate Spider-Man comic book series, where basically she's older than Spider-Man, she likes Spider-Man, she doesn't like Peter, she likes Spider-Man, she doesn't even want to know who Spider-Man is. But then at some point it gets revealed and she realizes that Spider-Man is much younger than her, and she just throws up and leaves, basically. And Spidey gets all confused and like, do I look like that ugly and all that stuff. So... She, real, uh, she realized that she made had a relationship or affair with a much, much younger, like basically a boy. So I think that would be a funny story to have, have in the MCU. So I think I, I would prefer that. But that's all I got with Black Cat. Um, next character is Silver Sable. Most that I know about her is from the um, Spider-Man PS4 game and the DLCs. I know she in some comics are a little bit different than that. Uh, but that's all I know about the character. But what I know she looks like, I will go with Leah Sidox. If that's how you say the name, mm, I have yeah, no idea again. It. Yeah, Sidox, yeah. Um, this is the biggest name butchering podcast episode in the history of podcasts. So uh, not really. I hope you enjoy at least that part. <laughs> um, but yeah, she played characters super similar to Silver Sable. At least how I know Silver to be like in the movie The Lobster. And I gotta say she was great. She also played a role in James Bond Spectre. So I know she can act. And she's also in the upcoming 007 also. Yeah, I didn't even know that. That's how much I know about James Bond. Uh, I remember she saw the trailer. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I didn't have to well, that. she can act. Let's just say that. But yeah, that's all the anti-heroes. All, all the two anti-heroes for now. Um, I know Venom would be otherwise in this list, but there's the whole Sony-Disney deal. And um, most likely we are going to have crossovers between them. So... We are not going to have new Venom in the MCU, so I have no reason to fancast Venom. By the way, if we will have new Venom in MCU, I will basically just have Tom Hardy to act Wolverine. And I have no idea who will act Venom, but again, I don't think that's going to happen in a million years. Just don't have Venom. <laughs> yeah, just simply don't have Venom. We have seen enough Venom. But yeah, uh, so we go to the Spidey villains. And again, not including Venom or Morbius. Because, well, what I just said. We basically have them already, so... <laughs> yeah, we already have them in Sonyverse, and they probably are going to be the same verse or crossover or something like that, so... Also, yeah. we are not going to have Mysterio, Vulture, or most likely also Scorpio, which they are not... It's not confirmed 100%, but the one in Homecoming at the end, 
talking in the prison with with Wilter. He he had all this great Scorpion tattoos and all that. So I think he's Scorpion for sure. So I'm not gonna thank us that character either. But let's stop it. Um, Doc Ock. And I'm gonna go with uh, Patton Oswald. Okay. Yeah. I think he will be great as the kind kind of genius who loses his mind. And if MCU will want to go into different, more scary direction, I will say maybe then Javier Bardem. And that's because he doesn't look the part, by the way. He doesn't look like Doc Ock in comics at all. But I know Bardem can act that type of scary genius guy 100%. He can act whatever. And I will love to see him in the MCU in a... In a big role, so yeah, there is there might be a small problem with this cast. Him already being cast in Marvel side, he's well, it's on series side. He's acting on a Marvel series, but uh, I think he's acting on Agents of Shield, I believe. Okay. Yeah, he's acting like six different characters on that. Well, he's just himself, but there, there's like some complex storyline. I'm not. Okay. So I don't know, but I just... yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should just go with Bardem. I know that's my other choice. Some people have also said Mark Hamill, but I don't know. It's just I don't even have any logical reason why I would prefer Bardem or Javier Bardem, but for some reason I would rather have him because I just. Can't guarantee that more camel could do great job with that. I don't know. I just simply don't know. I have never seen him in anything similar. Yeah. Like the closest thing I have heard him act is Joker, but well, that's great Joker. Again, that's totally different thing. He is great Joker, but that's voice acting. Joker is completely different character than Doc Ock, and yeah, totally. I have no guarantees for Hamill, so yeah, maybe he looks the part more than Bardem, but that's about it. The next character is the most rumored guy who is basically Green Goblin slash Norman Osborn. And everybody already probably know who knows anything about all the rumors, uh, casting rumors for them. So you probably know who I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with Matthew McConaughey. I think everybody already knows it will have to be Matthew McConaughey. And I am pretty sure Marvel already wants him and he already wants to be in, in MCU. And uh, why not? Because I, I don't want Green Goblin to be the same way that it was in Sam Raimi trilogy. And nothing wrong with that version. That was a great version. But I want him to be like this bad guy from the start. And not this guy that basically Doc Ock version 2 who also gets all messed up. With, yeah, because okay. he's a scientist and the science thing goes wrong. Or I don't want anything like that. I just want that he's just bad guy in general. And then... He's kind of the leader who kind of um, pays other villains to do jobs for him. And then at some point he like loses faith for the others. And then, okay, I'm going to do this by myself. And then he becomes the Green Goblin. Pano storyline again. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it myself. I mean, if you're going to go with Secret Wars, Green Goblin is that big of a character in the comics that he's not even just a Spider-Man villain at the end of the day. Yeah. He could be like the main villain for a whole phase. Like, if you will do Secret Wars, he could be the guy who puts the Avengers, like, Zemo type of way in the Civil War. Put Avengers against the X-Men and have the whole Secret Wars going down because of him. Yeah. And for that type of character, we need to have some great actor that has a huge screen presence. So that's why I'm going to go with Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Then let's go to Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin, uh, yeah. I mean, Ned... I don't know, I mean, well, Ned wasn't Peter Parker's best friend in the comics, like he is in the MCU, but Ned was Hobgoblin. He looked different, he was Caucasian and blonde guy, but anyways, the same character with the same name was Hobgoblin in the comics. One of the Hobgoblins, there was okay. many guys with the same mantle. How do you say that? I have no idea. Um, if it's not gonna be Ned, then I don't really know. Guys, if you have any ideas who should play Hobgoblin, any better ideas than me, then go ahead, comment down below. I will be happy to hear your choices for him. But that's yeah. all I got. Um, next guy, unless you have anything, any ideas for Hobgoblin, you probably don't. No, no, uh, I googled Hobgoblin and he's what do you think Goblin looks like, so. Yeah, it could be so many different guys if you're not gonna go with 
Ne. Already. Yeah, so. could be a fully CGI character anyway, so. Yeah, so who knows. Uh, let's go to the next character who's the most heavily rumored to be the major villain or the next next bad guy against Spider-Man in the Spider-Man 3 who yeah. is Kraven the Hunter. And I'm gonna go with uh, Joe, <coughs> Joe Magnello. How do you pronounce that name? Yeah, like it's Italian name that I know, but I speak 0% Italian. You you skip the I I bet it's Manginello. Yeah, probably so Manginello. You skip the A and I. I believe you skip the A and I. So it's like Man Manginello. Man. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm so personal apologies. I have no idea. I have no idea how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. You probably are not listening to this, but anyways, I think he will kill it as Craven, and also it would be funny since he was Flash Thompson in the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie from 2002. Um, also, he has said himself that he would want to be in the MCU and not just want to be in the MCU, but he would want to be Craven in the MCU. And he looks that guy. He he's a big guy, black hair, black beard, this menacing kind of look, tough guy. So he could perfectly act this crazy hunter who hunts animals for fun. And then his next mission is to hunt Spider-Man. The next character is Chameleon. Yeah. So. As a younger chameleon, I will go with Andrew Scott, and an older chameleon, I will go Dobie Stephens. Uh, Dobie Stephens acted, for example, in in James Bond at one point, had a role in James Bond, and then I know him best from Black Sails. Black Sails. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know he can act. I know Toby can act. There's no problem. But I will prefer younger chameleon since he is Craven's brother. And he will fit Joe's age better. But neither choice is bad if you ask me. So I don't really care. I would maybe prefer younger. So I will go with Andrew Scott. But Toby is like other option. Because he could also nail the role. Like when it comes to acting. Uh, but yeah, let's go to the last characters. We have six characters left. Uh, the next character is Nova. And um, I don't know much about him. So this is going to be short. I don't know much about Nova, but I'm gonna go with Dylan O'Brien. I know Nova should be, at least in some comics, he's somewhat same age group than Spider-Man. So, someone a little bit younger. And pretty much only because he seems to be a popular choice. And I don't got any better idea. So, yeah, whatever. So, let's go with that. Dylan O'Brien. Yeah. I don't, I don't even remember how I said the name at first, but I think that's how you actually say that. Anyway, let's go to Beta Ray Bill, who I actually wasn't even going to have in this list. But then I just had this thought that maybe uh, because we are going to have Christian Bale and he's going to be the main villain in Thor Love and Thunder. And then I heard these rumors that Beta Ray Bill will be the villain in that movie. So that will mean Christian Bale will be Beta Ray Bill. And I don't know anything about the character. Just a couple of pictures of him that I saw from the Google. So so, so is he just this dinosaur-looking Thor? Yeah, kind of. And he's villain. Yeah, it's a waste of action if they... <laughs> yeah, but if this is gonna... Be, and because this is gonna be again like the next Taika Waititi super crazy comedy Thor movie. So I think Visa Ray Bill would be a good choice to act in that type of movie as a villain. That would be kind of like a funny. I don't know if that would actually fit or would be a good choice. But if they're going to do that, then yeah, why not? That's why I put it to this list. Some people say that it's going to be Christian Bale acting Peter Ray Bill. And he's going to be the villain in that movie. But that's all I know. Then the next two characters... Daredevil and Punisher, they are here just because I want to say that I hope the rumors are true and they will continue the cancelled Netflix series in MCU. Uh, at least these two. I don't care about the Iron Fists and who else was the other <laughs> other ones. I don't care about them as much. But Daredevil and Punisher, they had perfect actors to be in those roles and I hope they are not gonna change that i hope they're still gonna have the same characters continue their series or even if they're not gonna continue their series which are much 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 more darker than mcu itself i still hope they're gonna have the same characters because why not i don't know if you can find any better for those roles so i don't have any any recasting choices because i don't want to recast them uh what do you think 
do you think they should be recasted? Mm, no, well, if they if they continue the series on Disney side, uh, there's no point of recasting. And if they if they yeah. if they just continue the series, there's no point of recasting. If they bring them in and don't continue continue the series, just bring them in as a MCU movie movie characters, just like don't have any series them to be in, then then there's a possibility of recasting. But uh, yeah, there's a possibility they could recast, but then again, still people who have seen those series, like 99% of the viewers love these guys as these characters and don't want them to change. So I don't see any reason to change them. But yeah, let's go to the last two. So the second last in this list is Moon Knight. And I'm gonna go with either Shia LaBeouf or Stephen Amell. Okay. And um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know much about Moon Knight again, but somebody said that Shia LaBeouf <laughs> would be good for that role and I would love to see him in the MCU, so that's why he's there. But I don't think he wants to be in the MCU, to be honest. I don't think he's that type of actor that he wants to be in the MCU. So my second choice is Stephen Amell, who has already um, acted Arrow in DC series and Arrow is pretty much like Moon Knight. Both are millionaire entrepreneurs that use their wealth to pay for the equipment uh, used by their alter ego to fight crime. So it's like Batman. Just like Batman. Yeah, okay. yeah just like Batman. So they are super similar characters. We know that he can act that type of character already. So Okay, now I want to see Shia LaBeouf as Batman. Do it! <laughs> that would be amazing. That would really be amazing. That could be the perfect cast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's not have Ciela Booth in the MCU. Let's just have Ciela Booth as Batman. <laughs> yeah, what new Batmans? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, let's go to the last last one. Because this is a hella long episode already. Like two times longer than our longest episode at the moment. I think we're going somewhere around one and a half hours. Yeah. Probably. I am sorry for the listeners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the last one is... The heavily rumored and or is he even confirmed i'm not even sure but ghost rider and um at least it's heavily rumored that we are gonna have ken reeves and mcu wants to have ken reeves as ghost rider and as the first villain for ghost riders first solo movie they want to have johnny depp as the villain okay i don't know who's the villain gonna be and I don't know if Ghost Rider is that big of a character that they should have solo movie for Ghost Rider, first of all. And second of all, have both of those characters in that movie to be villain and, and the hero himself. Yeah, that's what I also think about Ghost Rider. It's yeah. just it's like a, we have Ghost Rider already on Marvel sided series. Well, they're not, not Marvel side, I think they're Fox sided still. Those series are something like ABC or something. Yeah. Some random network doing those shows. Yeah, I don't remember anymore. Yeah, look, we have a Ghost Rider already existing. And in those, the character really isn't that serious. And I still don't think the series that we should have a, a movie. I don't mind having Keanu Reeves as a Ghost Rider. I just don't know if Ghost Rider should have a solo movies or especially have a solo trilogy. I just don't see any reason for that. It's like one of those, like, what is the one MCU movie coming there? Ten Rings movie there. Oh yes, yeah, Shang Chi and Ten Rings. I I totally think it's like just waste. Or it is Eternals yeah. a movie or is it a series? I'm movie. Okay, I think that is also like why 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 cancel Disney cancel. Maybe they can pull it off to like Iron Man. A lot of people didn't know about Iron Man at all before MCU. So and now he's one of the biggest superheroes. Yeah. Maybe they can maybe they can pull it off, but if Ghost Rider gets a solo movie, then I will get the solo movie. I just want to say that I don't know about Ghost Rider. Or, yeah, he could be part of the MCU, but I don't know about Ghost Rider having his own movies. But I do like the idea of having Keanu Reeves and Sony Depp in the MCU. I don't know which roles, but I would love to see both of them acting in MCU because they're both great. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the Ghost Rider, but those two actors would be amazing to see in the MCU. But that's all I gotta say from a Ghost Rider. Is that last? Yeah, we are done. We're done. We are done, ladies and gentlemen. Small cat if claps. You watch, if you watch the whole stuff, comment Batman, please. Yes, comment Batman with caps. And I promise I'm gonna answer all of you. Where is Rachel? Where is Rachel, eh? That's my promise. Um, but yeah, those were all the 43 goddamn characters. Uh, 40, okay. <laughs> 
we have that many characters that still hasn't been in the MCU. Let's not even talk about how many characters we already have in the MCU. So that's, I mean, that's <laughs> crazy. Would, uh, yeah, when when do we do the uh, recasting MCU already existing characters episode? That will be. <laughs> yeah, that so would that be a will. hell of a thing. I mean, probably not gonna happen, but yeah. Like, let's have everybody. Sinister Six working with um, with Thanos. He's gonna come back because. Well, let's be honest, nobody is ever truly dead in the MCU. And then let's have also like Galactus and let's put all of them in the same movie as villains. And let's have Fantastic Four and Avengers and X-Men and Spider-Man and all the other Spider-Man. Is that just Secret Wars or something? No, Secret Wars is X-Men versus Avengers. Well, but it's the same. Put the Fantastic Four in there. It would be like Avengers. Yeah, so like have all the, those X-Men and Fantastic Four and Avengers and all the other guys work together against like all these crazy villains at the same movie. No, no, no. It's going to be Secret Wars where they are actually... First they fight against each other and then they fight uh, <laughs> Batman. Okay, that, that will make sense. Christian Bale as Batman. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Christian Bale is gonna be Batman in, in the next tour. <laughs> okay. That's my. Okay, now, now we're just talking. That's my. Ta- talking my nonsense, idea. and we should just end the episode pretty much. But doing this long of an episode is not good for your mental health. Health, yeah, totally not. I don't know. My room is hot. I'm melting. I'm. I am totally going crazy. If you are melting, it. It's. I don't know. Get AC? We are living in Finland. Who can afford both AC and then also... Heating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, anyways, that was the episode. If you listen to the whole thing again, comment the Batman. And yeah, if you like to listen to this episode, and um, especially if you were crazy enough to listen to the whole thing, then like and also subscribe because we are going to have a lot of different Marvel things, a lot of other film industry related things so we would appreciate it very much we are new and a uh, small channel yeah really small channel so people we appreciate every single like every single view every single subscribe and them um, that's all i gotta say um hope all of you are having a fantastic day or or night i don't know what time is it when you're listening but thanks for listening and uh hope we're gonna see you in our next episode goodbye bye